without the money, it might not look great. But we have got, we, we managed to get some stunts and some action in there. Hopefully it builds to, you know. We, it's weirdly kind of strange postmodern situation where you have a, you have a stuntman playing your stuntman. It's quite weird. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? There was a man playing you, playing. That's right, like yeah. That. <laughs> I was going to pretend I did all my own stuff. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. But you've yes. blown that to the whole YouTube, you know, to the world. Yeah. No. Uh, yes, there was that. Yeah. Um, uh, but as, in terms of what was the other bit of the question? Who went smoothest? Uh, well, I suppose the easiest bits. Um, uh, I mean, because we'd been writing it for a long time, and we sort of do all the dialogue, when we're writing it, we'll sort of speak the dialogue and, you know, when it's easier, you know, when Julian's, you know, is um, Richard and I'm Clive. So say the scene in the, yeah, for example, the scene uh, in the garden when I first appear, and uh, we always wanted that, we always had that in the garden, and they went, it's gonna rain in <laughs> two minutes. So we're, we're gonna move everything inside. And we just went, let's just f film it mm. very quickly. <laughs> uh, and, um, and we actually had one take to do that, and had two cameras, and <coughs> we had that whole thing was done in like two minutes. So I suppose if we hadn't have been sort of comfortable, and you know, we knew how to say it, we knew the time, a lot of the timing, and because we'd written it and sort of improvised it, you know, devised it, those were sort of the easiest bits. And again, in the garage, me and Julian were, because we knew sort of how to do it, I suppose, because, you know, experience stuff. <laughs> Cheers. Um, and you touched you touched on there for a second that, that obviously this is a British film, and obviously I'd say the Britishness is such a, a character of this film. Um, and so I guess with that, I'm kind of curious, what, what, what are kind of your opinions on the take for the British scene in comedy? And I guess the, the flip side of that is, you know, do, do you think this film will appeal elsewhere, or do you care? You know, or is, it, is the Britishness sort of the, a big important part of uh, enough? <laughs> uh, well, I mean... We uh, we wanted to do a film set here and exploring a certain type of uh, failure <laughs> that happens. <laughs> and I always think, you know, you're only ever a couple of bad decisions away from being Richard Thorncroft. You know, you're really only <laughs> only ever a, you know so you could so easily end up like you know a few bad decisions and you're, you're there really. I mean, I, I don't think it's I, I, but it's quite fun to play that sort of type of character. I mean, they exist everywhere. Not just in England, obviously. I mean, the script was a lot of people. We did think about trying to do it in America at one point, and then, but it's a sort of there's a certain type of person, and maybe an actor or a sort of personality or a celebrity who's had his time, and he's still sort of trying to, and he can't get where he wants to be, and he's lost and trapped and out of time and out of luck and out of shape, and he's you know really got weird hair, <laughs> and he's sort of trying to be this thing he's not anymore, you know, and then. And those, that's a universal thing, I think. <laughs> so, you know, make, there's no reason why it couldn't work. And the story itself is quite a high, in a way it's quite a high concept story. It's, it's sort of, a, you know, a fictional hero mistaken for the real hero by an innocent sort of party, yeah. which is, you know. That's I, it's you know. sort of a genre, isn't it? I mean, we, yeah. you know, we, um, one of my favorite films growing up was Three Amigos, you know, which has a similar sort of concept. <clears throat> And you got Tropic Thunder and things like that, where, where an innocent person sort of thinks that you're real because you play the character on television. But and people ask this sort of, will it translate? Well, we don't really know. Ho hopefully, but you can't really make a film. I don't think um, looking too much at that. I mean, we admire so many of my sort of favorite comedies, or you know, our favorite comedies. Um, something like Fargo. Fargo, for instance, is I know nothing about where that is and the people who live there, but I get it. And it feels authentic, and uh, I think if that sort of comes across, then you know you can only be sort of true to that. To that. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think and, um, people sometimes think uh, you do have these conversations where you go, "Well, if there's an American in it, maybe could, American people would watch it," yeah. almost as though they won't watch. It. Well, maybe that's true. I don't know, but they, they don't. They only watch things if there's an American person in them, right. or they don't like to watch anything where there's someone speaking in a different. Yeah. And it's funny, I mean, it's interesting to hear what you think, because it, people always go as well, you know, yeah, we're looking at the demographics, and will people under 25 know what this sort of show is? 
And I didn't know what Three Amigos was, I still don't. You know, there, there were some Mexican guys, and, but I got that they were in a show and they were playing Mexican guys and they weren't real and they were actors and they were all a bit, you know, did dance numbers and you know, that sort of yeah, thing. So yeah. I sort of think if you, uh, you can't really tailor it to an audience or to a, you just have to try and do what you think's funny and hope that people sort of go, yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> Even if you don't remember something like Bergerac, you go, I get that there's superhero movies where there's, you know, actors play those roles. So hopefully, uh, you know. He was gonna have a, Bionic nose. <laughs> yeah, that was the first idea. He had a. Um, you'd have a nose that could smell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we thought you'd have a, like a cybernetic nose yeah. helmet. But we realised that visually that wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we thought even that was sort of stretching believability of a show. Like even that wouldn't that wouldn't have got made. <laughs> yeah. So we had to do it a show that could. Yeah. Seem to have been able to have been made. <laughs> no, so it's not very. Uh, even though, even though yeah. an idea can't see the, the can see the truth is quite a bad idea for a detective in a way. It means that there's no, you know, the plots are over quite soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you would have to you would have to discover a way of damaging his eye each yeah, week. Yeah. My patch is faulty, <laughs> and then at the end, my new patch working. writing. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not working. <laughs> Then at the end he gets it fixed and he goes, it was the oyster farmer. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, the nose as well. Uh, having a detective going around sort of sniff, going, <laughs> sniffing is not a nice sort of look. And uh, you thought you'd look good in an eye patch, which you did in the end. Yeah. You look good with one eye. Yes, uh, it was hard acting with one eye. Yeah, I tried, I, yeah, I had one on the other day. Disorientating, actually. Yeah. When I'd be the stuntman, obviously I'd have to have a, you know, the eye patch on, and um, it's yeah. really hard to act with that. Yeah. So really well done. Thank you. Really. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Never when you take it off, you've got a really big pupil. <laughs> Your eye dilates in the in the. Uh, <laughs> so you take it off, you've got like a big pupil. It's horrible. <laughs> So, I think we're learning a lot about uh, your process, I suppose. Um, um, well, I think at this point, what we'll do then is we'll open it up to questions if, if you guys have any questions. Uh, I don't know whether we'll throw around this roaming mic, probably the best way of doing it, or whether we can just hear you. Uh, probably, yeah. Let's do the mic. Well, yeah, you're in the front row, yeah. go on, Luke. The mic will make you feel quite yeah. powerful. <laughs> yeah, I'll try I feel like that has some power now. How's it feel? Um, pretty intense. Um, <laughs> so, my question was you guys obviously have quite a clear rapport between the two of you, and you also wrote these things eventually for yourself. And so my question really is, how do you then find, having written this for as long as you said you've written it, and have such an idea of the character, how do you find then handing off to a director who's not either of you guys? Um, sort of dealing with that, because you obviously have ideas of scenes, but you have to, to a certain extent, let go and allow them that as well. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Um, I found it quite. I found it quite challenging as well, uh, challenging in a way, because yeah. I, uh, I, I am a patrol freak, and so I. Was, yeah, I, I didn't even like you having the mic actually. Then I felt, <laughs> felt quite sort of angry. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, but I, I sort of, I, I did know that I had to let go of it because I was going to be in it and running around, and so I had to just sort of. Sort of being like a backseat director and let, let, let it go. And it was, I had fun actually filming it in the end. Uh, but I think initially I was like, yeah, a bit it, sort of worried about relinquishing that. Sort of. It was really funny sort of process getting, so, so we had Sean Foley, who was our director, who we knew from um, our sort of comedy theatre days or doing, doing live stuff. And Sean was in a group called the Right Size. And uh, they did very sort of uh, creative, uh, sort of comedy shows with narratives and stuff. And um, we were sort of fans of, well, they did. And then Sean was directing the theatre, did lots of West End stuff, but had never done anything on screen before. I don't think he even had made anything. I don't think he had a video on his own. <laughs> he never made it. But <laughs> never done anything, never even done TV. But he was very passionate about it. And for some reason, when with the sort of financiers were really excited by the fact he'd never done anything. This could be amazing. <laughs> but um, I mean, he, and he, well, as well, he just went, I'm gonna, not going to try anything too fancy. I'm just going to shoot you guys and the actors and the comedy. And um, I won't be doing any fancy you know, zip shots and you know, whatever. Zip shot? Is that a thing? <laughs> it's nothing. That's not a thing. That's it not is a now. Thing. <laughs> 
I want more zip shots. Um, so yeah, but he, we were all sort of, yeah, we were sort of learning as we went along and Sean just surrounded himself with very good people and we part trust in him and we think it's sort of, um, you know, hopefully it's pay, paid off. You know. Well, it certainly feels like it watching it. Um, cool, let's go for another question. We've got Matt here. Hey, um, I'll just shout me through this. Um, so, if you, I mean, you mentioned, Simon, the, the section where, obviously, the two of you were improvising the garden scene. What's the sort of process of, like, and I know, obviously, most of the improvised bits sort of mostly came with the two of you, but what's the sort of process when it comes to scripting? If, do, you, do you just leave a gap and go make it up? Like, how do you, and what's, what's the process with giving the trust to the director of just, like, you know, when will you let him step in and just stop you guys if you go for too long, or what's the kind of... Well, I mean, we wrote, we, we, we sort of write the, um, we all write the script, so when we'll improvise it a bit when we're writing it, okay. so it becomes, it's, we'll go through the permutations quite a lot in, in your kitchen. Or lot, uh, yeah, often you, often you remember a funny thing you said, like, about two years ago <laughs> in the kitchen, mm. and then you think on the day, if you've got time, you think, I'll just throw that thing in that Julian didn't like, but maybe everyone else will. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really Did it ever really catch you off guard? Would one of you catch the other off guard? And sort of well, in, in, in those scenes, yeah, it was, yeah. Quite, it was all about trying to uh, top each other and um, <laughs> yeah. have fun with that. We didn't do that too often in the film. It was no. only when, sort of when we were together. Like, I tried to do that with some of the other actors and they weren't happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, David Schofield, like David Schofield, who plays what Steve, are you doing? Uh, this is not how I work. D David Schofield, <laughs> he, he won't mind us saying when I don't. No, he no, he was, he was, he's brilliant. He's brilliant, but he did. He was in you know, American Werewolf in London. Yeah. yeah, film. So he played the guy who went. You made me miss the ball. <laughs> pub scene, famous pub scene. So he's one of the chief. That. He's a sort of really annoyed with me, sort of chief. But he would wait for you to finish my nonsense. Because I'd go, have you stopped? Yeah. Because <laughs> I'd just be chipping in little bits and pieces. But he would sort of wait for me to sort of peter out. And then do his line. <laughs> and he I would go on with you and then he would go, you'd go to your line and go, I was waiting for my cue. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. I mean, I didn't give him his cue. <laughs> you went, you I was just making made. it up. Yeah, um, a bit. Because I'm from that uh, background in a way, a little bit with the bouche and... We wrote the scripts and we improvised them a bit, and it was always very loose. Again, that was uh, one of the attractions of Sean. Was Sean when uh, we're going to do rehearsals for it, which is it doesn't sort of happen that often. I don't think in British comedies, many because of money, maybe I don't know, but you um, don't generally get sort of some time to like Clive, for instance. Um, my accent, you know, Clive. I didn't know. I was just we started rehearsals and it was just sort of my voice and then. We sort of went, it doesn't seem to be that funny, funny. So we just tried a few things, you know, and Sean go, just try some shit, just what can you do? And I went, well, I can do just shot a ching, and, and everyone started laughing, and then you went. So we did like that sort of, uh, that sort of uh, devised approach, or that sort of slightly, what you would do more in sort of comedy theatre, like doing Edinburgh shows. Mm. So that was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it can be, it was sort of, Going into the world of film is sometimes you you think uh, what are the rules here and I don't know them and I feel a bit intimidated and everything. But um, actually, it was much all the stuff that was was we'd sort of done before the looseness, the improvising, the way we devise shows and things was, was exactly the same. I mean, um, yeah. just there's a lot more organisation that goes into it. But the, you can be a bit intimidated by the hierarchy of films or something because you don't know quite know how they work. But really, it's uh, everything that we uh, you know, all the stuff that worked before worked in film as well, it seemed to me, it didn't seem to be that different. Which I think people like to think that some people within the film industry will sort of try and make you feel as though it's a very, very different place, with very, very different rules, and you don't understand them. And, uh, you know, and that, so, but I think that's bollocks. <laughs> of things we wanted to sort of do it properly we were quite thorough we read all we read lots of books 
and we would save the uh, cat, save the cat, and yeah. rub, rub in the key, and yeah. Yeah. story. Yeah. All those books by people who've never actually written a film. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but we did, and we, we thought we wanted to be quite thorough. And then it was a mixture of, you know, you got to wait for the finance, and we weren't. It was about ten years from conception to, you know, um, hitting the screens. But it, we obviously we weren't. We had other things to do, and. You know, like acting kids. things and children and um, uh, not hopefully the next one won't be. The movie is our child. <laughs> um, the long destination. So yeah, it was a mixture of things. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I hope that does that answer your question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was. I, I, it was um, uh, I'm just going to say exactly the same thing. As Simon, but no, it, it was. Um, it was a kind of learning curve. Uh, to, I, you know, to write something long as well. I've uh, never read anything that long, but, so it had its own all its own problems and difficulties. And yeah, it was you realise you really, you really have to. I mean, hopefully, you know, do you en do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy it? Yeah. So hopefully, you, you get once you're an hour in. The difference with TV and yeah, is that you get if you're an hour in and you're not really enjoying, and you've got another half an hour to go. It's a long time. Just sort of, whereas if you're doing a sketch show or something, you're, well, you don't like that, there's something else coming along. And we were aware of that, painfully aware, maybe too aware, and we went, Scott, we've got to try and... So there's things like, you know, we spent a long time, just for example, the, the sort of third act, you know, the, I think Julian had the idea, of, why doesn't he put him in a, the doll? Why doesn't he have him in the doll's outfit? Yeah. And he's glued in, and he's, and that suddenly that was like, that will hopefully propel you in that final sort of section. Because we didn't, we didn't know, we, want, we knew we wanted him back in a suit, yeah. back in the outfit, but we didn't know why, and we were going, it's like he needs to be glued in it. And that was, I mean, oh, he could, <laughs> could just glue him in it. Because the character of the Kestrel could, could yeah. do that. And then, so then we thought, well, right, could we do that? Yeah. Could be quite good. Just that challenge, and then you get notes yeah. from execs and things going, yeah, the thing is, once he's in the suit, like, because obviously you're waiting for him, he gets to the island and then, he gets his outfit on for the phone call, and it's quite a comedic moment. And, and we sort of got notes going, can that be like an hour in? <laughs> because that's sort of, that's like the superhero puts his cape on, and that's when everyone gets really excited. And you sort of go, well, we can't really wait that long. So you have to sort of, for the concept, which is, you know, an actor who used to play a character revisiting that character, and you've got to find new ways of p putting him into that situation. And so there was the is sometimes the, the, the sort of, the producers and the people and the executives and the money people are all reading uh, Robert McKee's story <laughs> and Save the Cat. And so they all go, well, hang on, couldn't he just, we would be inciting incident at page 32. We want to move, and they're talking this sort of language as well, which it's quite sort of dangerous. That's why it's good to read those books so that you can go, That's the you only know thing. what you're talking about, <laughs> and it's bollocks. <laughs> Congratulations on the film, and I didn't know if you could hear us sort of in there, but it was... No, getting, we, didn't, uh, we didn't stay. I didn't listened in at one point, it was just dead silence. So, <laughs> <laughs> it just walked away quick. Well, I think, I think so the must be the last scene. Uh, I would say yeah. the, the biggest laugh definitely from the room seemed to go to Castrol waking up just in time to hear that everything yeah, yeah. was a lie. Well, I mean, I mean that's, that's, another, uh, that's another uh, example of what that uh, gentleman was talking about. Um, it's very satisfying to get the biggest laugh the, towards the end of the film rather than, because obviously, you know, you can front load it. And a lot of these, when we looked at the sort of genre, a lot of those films that we're talking about, Three Amigos and Tropic Thunder does pretty well with it, but our Galaxy Quest, you know, often the, the, the laughs diminish because you've had all the fun and then everyone gets serious and you get sort of love interest stuff and towards the end of the film it didn't work so well. So that's very satisfying to know that that, uh, yes. that got. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's give congratulations. Thanks. 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 Thanks.